Okay, let me see. I don't think it's going to take 10 minutes to disprove the existence of God. Um, <laughs> the, the atheist proposition is the following. Most of the time, it may not be said that there is no God. It may be said that there is no reason to think that there is one. That was the situation after Lucretius and Democritus and the original anti-theistic uh, thinkers began their critique of religion. And I would just ask you all, ladies and gentlemen, to bear in mind a, a mild distinction while we go on. You may wish to be a deist, as my uh, heroes Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine were, and you may not wish to abandon the idea that there must be some sort of first or proximate cause or prime mover of uh, the known and observable world and universe. But even if you can get yourself to that position, which we unbelievers maintain is always subject to better and more perfect and more elegant explanations, even if you can get yourself to that position, all your work is still ahead of you. To go from being a deist to a theist, in other words, from someone who says, God cares about you, knows who you are, minds what you do, answers your prayers, cares which bits of your penis or clitoris you saw away or have sawn away for you, minds who you go to bed with and in what way, minds what holy days you observe, minds what you eat, minds what positions you use for pleasure, all your work is still ahead of you and lots of luck because there's nobody there's nobody, even Aquinas had to give it up. There's no one who can move from the first position to the second. So I could, and I'm actually strongly tempted to, I could leave it right there. But then it's not in my nature to um, let off a captive audience so easily. <laughs> so I'll add a couple of things. The reasons why I am glad this is not true would, I suppose, be the graver man of my case. Some people I know who are atheists will say they wish they could believe it. Some people I know who are former believers say they wish they could have their old faith back. They miss it. I don't understand this at all. I think it's, a, it's, it's an excellent thing that there's no reason to believe in the absurd propositions I just uh, admittedly rather briefly rehearsed to you. Um, the main reason for this, I think, is that it is a totalitarian belief. It is the wish to be a slave. It is the desire that there be an unalterable, unchallengeable, tyrannical authority who can convict you of thought crime while you are asleep, who can, can, who can subject you, who must indeed subject you, to a total surveillance around the clock every waking and sleeping minute of your life, I say of your life, before you're born, and even worse, and where the real fun begins after you're dead. <laughs> a celestial North Korea Who wants this to be true? Who but a slave desires such a ghastly fate? I've been to North Korea. It has a dead man as its president. Kim Jong-il is only head of the party and head of the army. He's not head of the government or the state. That office belongs to his deceased father, Kim Il-sung. It's a necrocracy. A thanatocracy is one short of a trinity, I might add. The Son is the reincarnation of the Father. It is the most revolting and utter and absolute and heartless tyranny the human species has ever evolved. But at least you can fucking die and leave North Korea. Does the Quran, does the Quran or the Bible offer you that liberty? No. No. The tyranny, the misery, the utter ownership of your entire personality, the smashing of your individuality only begins at the point of death. This is evil. This is a wicked preachman. So, that's the first thing. <laughs> Second, it attacks us in our deepest, in our deepest, most essential integrity. It's an insult to us in other ways. It says that we, you and I, could not, individually or collectively, decide upon a right action 
or right thing without celestial divine permission. We would not know right from wrong if we did not have heaven's uh, permission to do so. Where else, how else could we know? Our human solidarity, our innate knowledge of right and wrong, our, 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 our acute awareness of what is fair and what is unfair, what is just and worthless to us, these come to us also as gifts from uh, the great unassailable uh, dictator and throne. What, what, what could abolish our integrity? What could abolish our honesty, our decency, our dignity more than that? The second, third, uh, is a little more pragmatic. Um, religion is our first, that's why I'm so fascinated with it, it's our first version of the truth. It's our first attempt as a species. It's what we tried when we didn't know anything. We didn't know we lived on a spherical planet. We didn't know that our planet revolved around the sun. Uh, we didn't know that there were microorganisms that explained disease. We thought diseases came from curses or witches or uh, ill-wishing or uh, uh, devils or dust devils. We didn't know anything from the childish, terrified, ignorant uh, origins of our animal primate species. We come to religion. It's also our first attempt at philosophy, our first attempt at morality, our first attempt at healthcare, actually, but because it was our first, it is our worst. We now have better explanations for all these dreads, and we have cleared up all of these mysteries, yet we still dwell. Um, and in some countries, in some societies, not just dwell, but live under, under a totalitarian regime that forbids us to think about the progress that has been made, or denies us the knowledge that these adva advances have in fact occurred. So it has become, uh, where once it probably was an aid to our survival, um, a, a really great peril to our continued ability to live as a civilized species. Thus, it seems to me that in point of its uh, proposing of a totalitarian solution to what is after all a real problem, to its ghastly uh, reliance upon the supernatural rather than the much more miraculous, much more beautiful, much more elegant, much more numinous, much more harmonious natural explanations. Think how much lovelier uh, Einstein and Darwin are. Think how, how, how much more uh, elegant and persuasive they are than the idea of the burning bush. Or the, or, the, or, the, or the demand that without circumcision there can be no redemption. Just, just picture it. And then I'll, I'll give you one final thought experiment. This is what you have to believe now, if you're a monotheist. Because we, we now know things we didn't used to know. We know that the human species could be as much as 200,000 years ago. That it, that it becomes separate from the Cro-Magnons and the... Um, uh, the rival prehuman species. Could be as little as 100. Richard Dawkins thinks 200,000. Francis Collins, who did the Human Genome Project, who's, a, by the way, C.S. Lewis kind of Christian, thinks 100,000. All right, I'll take 100. I'll take 100. Here's what you have to believe. For 100,000 years, humans are born as a primate species. Expectation of life, what, 25 years for the first few 100,000 years? First few tens of thousands of years. Infant mortality, rife. Microorganism disease, terrifying. Earthquakes, uh, volcanoes, extraordinary. But, and fights over land, over territory, over food, over women, over tribalism. Frightening too. For 95, 96,000 years, heaven watches this. With folded arms with indifference, with coldness. And then around three to 4,000 years ago, but only in really barbaric, illiterate parts of the Middle East. <laughs> not in China, not in China or where people can read or think or do science. No, no, no. In barbaric, illiterate, backward parts of the Middle East, it's decided we can't let this go on. We better intervene. And what better way than by human sacrifices and plagues and mass murder? And if that doesn't make them behave morally, we just don't know what does. 
If there is a single person in this room who can bring themselves to believe anything remotely like that, they convict themselves of being, first, very stupid, and second, very immoral. And thus, it seems to me that the case for divine intervention and for the supernatural falls, and that we should be glad that it's fallen. And thank you.